Hi, my name's Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup, and this evening I'm joined by Dave, Sam, Tim. And we've just finished playing Lisboa. Which, if I just step back here, you can see the board here is massive and there's absolutely tons going on in this game. So I'm not going to try and explain all of it by any means. It's very much a heavy Euro uh, and there's all kinds of different things you can do. We're in um, Portugal, I think, and it's um, actually there's quite a lot of nice history in here. I will just mention this briefly. Let me just focus this for you a second. On each of these cards which will be playing uh, on your hand, you can see there's a little event uh, in terms of things that were happening at the time. So we're in the 1700s in Portugal. But when it's your turn, you have to play one of these cards, and they're all going to take uh, allow you to take actions, essentially. But first of all, you should realise that you can either put the card in your tableau over here, so you can put it in the, the bottom, or not those, these ones go in the top, thanks Tim. So if you stick it in the top here, um, you're going to get some little bonus when you do it, in this case some goods, um, but then that's going to let you take one kind of ability, or another sort of card, you can stick it in the bottom, and this gives you like a permanent special ability, uh, or you can play the cards onto the board here. Uh, so there's kind of four different ways you can play the cards. I'm not going to go through all the details there, but basically there's um, a bunch of different actions you can take when you play the card, depending on how you play it. So if you want to influence one of these important guys, then you get to take the actions at the bottom here. Um, this action here lets you put these uh, sort of bureaucrats down here, I can't remember quite what they're called, but you take your guys, officials, there we go, and you add them in here, and the more of other people's guys are in there, the more influence, this little influence track here, you've got to spend to actually access the appropriate noblemen and manage their ability. So you're kind of putting your guys out to block other people effectively. This lets you put more guys out. This lets you take a plan. So you kind of go to the architect's office, there's a bunch of plans that are available here for a nice public building. So you stick it in your plan section uh, and using this action from this particular guy, I think that's the king, you can build a public building. So you kind of consult your plans, you have to spend your guys that you've been put in here so they kind of come back to your board. You've got a nice little spire in there. And then you get to take some one of the public buildings. So you might take this one here, for example, and that's going to go around the outside in the city. There's lots of shops that get built in the middle and the public buildings go around the outside and one of the things you do with the public buildings is you get these rubble cubes the idea is there's been earthquakes and tsunamis and fires and things and you're clearing up all the rubble so there's different kinds of rubble and you're kind of collecting sets effectively of rubble which are going to help you score points in various ways as you go through the game but also when you put one of these public buildings down depending on the shops that are here you're scoring points if it's on the matching street. So you can see there's a pink street down here. So any um, shops on the pink street are going to score points according to the numbers at the bottom there. So that's the public buildings thing and you're effectively completing a contract when you do that and you're getting end game points for whoever has the most contracts. Uh, a couple of other actions then. This is the action that lets you build the shops here and you have to pay according to the different types of rubble so it's where they intersect so if I wanted to build on this one here you can see yellow's gone here then there's two red cubes in fact two red cubes here as well so it'd be a total of cost of four red cubes and the cost at the bottom so that would be two coins per red cube so eight coins in total so you can see that's fairly expensive but people have been spending money and you kind of get to clear up some of the rubble when you do that which is another way of acquiring these for the sets this one lets you build a ship. There's a pile of ships, they've all gone now, but you, here we go, you sort of build ships, and ships is a way of selling or shipping your goods across the water effectively um, to get money. That's one of the main ways you're gonna get money. So you're collecting uh, goods. This action here lets you produce goods. So all your shops on here will kind of produce goods. Um, we've got a whole stack of goods in here. And then you can take the, um, there's a shipping action, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, which lets you get the money for them. This one is letting you get end game scoring. So there's a bunch of cards you can get here, which will get you points for um, certain kinds of buildings, or uh, you can see at the end here, uh, having, there were some majorities, so you go for having the most of the plan, uh, contract architect things, uh, and lots of different ways of getting end game scoring, which is this one. Uh, this one is quite important. When somebody takes an action like this, where they influence one of the people and do the things at the bottom, this gives you a token, 
like if I say take this one, which lets you follow someone else's action. So when they're taking the green action, I can spend this and then I get to do the actions from here as well. So that's quite significant. And this is another little track. There's some kind of clergy guy who moves around here. And when he advances, if he goes to here, you could then take one of these um, special tiles, which effectively give you an ongoing special ability. So that's a nice way of getting extra special abilities. So those are the kind of main actions you're taking by um, going and consulting with these noblemen here. But if you, you know, I was talking about, you can stick the cards under here or at the top, it's possible then to sell your goods here and that's where you can cash them in effectively um, there's a nice little market track here the more the goods are produced the more the values of the different goods drops so at the start of the game they're quite high and they kind of move down but that's one way of getting cash and you can also secretly influence the nobles uh, which lets you take a couple of these actions but not all of them um, by spending the influence that you've managed to garner here um, so there's a whole bunch more things going on here um, you're getting end game scoring depending on which who has the majority in different uh, streets here uh, as I say you're getting points for your rubble you're getting points for your cars that you've gone there's points in lots of different ways here and there's a whole pile of things I haven't really mentioned but that hopefully just gives you a brief overview of what you're trying to do most points wins what do we think uh, yeah it's it's kind of hard to say after one play. This is definitely a game that requires multiple playthroughs to get a really good feel for it. Um, it's 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 very very heavy Euro. Um, uh, yeah, someone made a joke that half the board is a heavy Euro on its own. Uh, so yeah, it's it's definitely a very heavy Euro. Um, yeah, I really, I, I really like it. I think I was surprised how tight it was. It seemed that someone was well. Eventually, Tim ran away with it, but he played played it a fair few times. Um, the rest of us were first time players. Um, but I think I think it was it, it was quite tight. Um, yeah, I, I think there's lots of interesting ways to play. You've, I think. It, it's a game that you either play it a lot or like it's not a game that you want to just play once so yeah I, I, I think it would really benefit from multiple plays because there's just so much information there's a uh, player aid book which has uh, which covers uh, all the different uh, clergy tiles, covers all the different symbols, um, so yeah, enjoyed it, but I definitely wanted to play it a few more times. Okay, Sam? I think I'd agree with that, I mean this was my first play and there's, there's a lot of rules uh, in the game. Um, I found the rules summary very useful, because um, there are quite a lot of different icons in the game, um, but they're all explained really well in here. Um, I did feel that this track, the, the clergy track here, was didn't add too much to the game, but complicated a bit with the recurring uh, bonuses. Would have been quite nice in an expansion, but I still think it added to the game. Um, so yeah, as I said, there's a lot of rules for a first first time player, but yeah, I would like to play it again, and I thought it's good. Okay, Tim. Yeah, there there are a lot of rules. It's a really hard game to teach. It takes a, a good long while to get everyone up to speed, and so like Dave says, you want to play it really in a group that's going to play it all of the time. But I think if people do have the time to give it multiple tries, it gets far quicker, and it's really easy to understand the rules because like all of Vitella Server's games it's super thematic, everything makes sense once you've sort of worked out how it all links together I really love the game, I think uh, it's one of his better games Rating? Uh, probably a 9 mm, Okay, Sam? Uh, 8.5 for me Wow. Yeah, I'm going to go with an, like an 8 for now I think the gallerist was maybe a bit better. This was a bit quick. I, I, I expected this to last longer, uh, given the complexity. But it, yeah, I, I'll stick with an eight. But I think after multiple playthroughs, that will go up to probably like nine, uh, eight, eight point five nine. Okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, there is an awful lot going on, and your first playthrough 
is going to be a bit of a struggle. You really need someone who knows everything um, because you're going to find, certainly for the first hour, we're all asking, so how do you do this again? And what's that for? And what does this symbol mean? As I say, the player aids are great, but it's quite amusing that he's got an entire booklet, effectively, for the player aids, but they are very well written and they do really help. Uh, in, it's one of those games I'd want to play again and again, really. It's long, but I was fully engaged all the way through. And now that I've played it once, I'm like, right, I know what I want to do for my next play. I've got a sort of strategy already formulating in my mind. Um, really enjoyed it. Uh, Dave's sticking coins at me uh, in front of me, just to make one little point here. Uh, this represents five coins, and this represents ten coins, which I think most people felt was a little bit confusing. It's very hard to actually tell the difference between the two there. But apart from that, I thought it was great. Really enjoyed my play of it. Uh, I think I'd be on an eight out of ten. I like the thematic integration as well, actually, because it looks quite dry, but actually they've made an effort with the history, and I really appreciate that. All right, thanks very much for watching. That was Liz Boa.